Welcome again to my YouTube channel. This is Health and Lifestyle with Dr. Sheyani. In this particular video, I'll be talking to you about a very interesting topic. I'm sure that everyone would like to know more about this. In fact, even we doctors, we are still learning more, so much about COVID-19. Okay, that's our topic for discussion in this series. I'll be starting with the symptoms and signs of COVID-19. Symptoms and signs of COVID-19. So in this video, you'll be learning about one, the symptoms of COVID-19, two, the signs of COVID-19, and the third area I'll be considering is actually my ex personal experience uh, with COVID-19. As a matter of introduction, what is COVID-19? COVID-19 is Coronavirus-19. 19 because it was discovered in 19. That was the first time it was discovered. So COVID-19 is Coronavirus-2019 and it's caused by, of course, a virus and the name of the virus is SARS-CoV-2. That is Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2. There is Coronavirus 1. So it first appeared in 2019 and it has widely spread globally. It's a disease of global attention and then of global interest. Medical and the general public and globally is actually said to be a pandemic right now and then the symptoms of COVID-19 is what we've been going into now it's been said that four to five days after infection with the virus some people may take up to two weeks before they come to manifest with the symptoms so symptoms have to do with what a person an individual will complain about will probably sense differently from their normal state the symptoms of COVID-19 is a long list, but we look at the very common symptoms. One is fever. Um, fever could be high grade mostly, and for some, it just be low grade. Okay, and it said that 83 to 99 percent of people will present uh, with fever when it comes to COVID-19. Of course, fever is not not a, a specific symptom; it's a non-specific symptom. Other there are other causes of fever, but um, COVID-19, one of the major um, presenting symptoms is this fever, which is usually high grade. Cough is another common one because it affects the lungs, the virus affects the lungs. Of course, over time it could progress to affect other organs in the body. So, but it's been said that 59 to 80 percent of people present with cough. And then the next one is breathlessness or shortness of breath. Um, 44 to 70 percent talk about feeling tired. Some people come with um, chills, body pains. 11 to 35 percent actually present with body pains. Headache is another feature when it comes to the symptoms of COVID-19. Sore throat is another. And interestingly, some people present with loss of um, the ability to smell or the ability to taste. Probably um, for women, for example, who are used to tasting meals in the kitchen, somebody could find out that, oh, they are not, they are not actually able to taste whether there's salt in the, in the soup and they have put enough salt. And that could be a symptom for somebody. And then some have presented with rashes, skin rashes, which is red. Other symptoms that a patient or individual may present with or may have when it comes to COVID-19 include anorexia, which we call loss of appetite. 40 to 84 percent of people lose appetite when it comes to um, COVID-19. I've mentioned shortness of breath. It said that 31 to 40 percent of people present with shortness of breath, you know, having this uh, challenge, using more effort to breathe. Some actually come up with reduction of sputum. Maybe with cough, maybe without cough, that's 28 to 33% of uh, people. So when it comes to COVID-19, some people may have symptoms that last for weeks, apart from a group that may have for days and that, that results for weeks. It means that um, it may be getting severe and some people actually go for months and then some may come up with complications of COVID-19. Like I said earlier, even we doctors, people in the medical field, people doing research, we are 
looking at the long-term effects of COVID-19. We are studying this virus and we are still looking at the long-term effects. Okay, but let's talk about how COVID-19 is spread. COVID-19 is usually spread from person to person um, that is contact with um, a person that has been infected. So when the person coughs, when they talk, uh, or when they sneeze, the virus is released. Okay, you know virus, bacteria, parasites are things that you cannot see with a physical eye. You use the microscope to see them. So nobody knows what's contained in that sneeze, in that um, cough, and then um, while talking, releasing some air which contain which may contain this virus. Of course, so pathogens of different kinds. So when a person releases this uh, virus into the atmosphere, anybody in that same environment, in the room, for example, person may inhale this virus and then pass it on to other people so a number of people get the virus maybe by shaking hands with somebody that has the pathogen the virus probably in their hands by then putting that hand through their nose through their mouth and then uh, it spreads into their system from organ from mentioned talking other Areas that we consider include droplets on surfaces. So we said that the virus can stay for so a period before uh, it dies off. So the person can touch surfaces where this virus has been dropped on the surface. And then doctors are thinking of other possible ways by which uh, this virus can spread. Now I'll be talking to you about the Signs. That's what um, the doctor sees when a person presents to the hospital and they examines the patient. So there's a general examination that is done. And then in the course of presenting at the hospital, usually vital signs are taken. So a person with COVID-19, of course, we, we cannot identify at the point usually of presentation apart from um, taking a history. Then before a person sees the doctor, normally the nurse uh, we usually take the vital sign, so and that may be a signal when a doctor looks at the vital signs of a patient or an individual presenting signals that uh, could be COVID 19. Okay, so what we have to look at other related symptoms and then signs before we make uh, a diagnosis. Okay, and the diagnosis usually confirmed with a test around the suspicion. So we can make a diagnosis after conducting um, a test okay but on examination when it comes to the signs of COVID-19 one of the things a uh, doctor will notice that uh, a patient is actually warm to touch of course fever using the ther uh, thermometer um, could be as high as 37.6 and then above that 37, 38, 39 be very, it will be high grade, high grade fever, and then person may have their heart rate increase. That's tachycardia, and then maybe due to fever, or maybe due to um, somebody that is still seem to shock. And then another is on um, chest examination, the respiratory system. The person may be having increased number of um, cycles when it comes to inhalation and exhalation. That's taking in breath and then. Um, even it out. Now, the oxygen saturation is one of the things that the doctor will check that's using the pulse oximeter. Um, that's the instrument that is used to check for the oxygen delivery to the lungs, to the system of uh, the individual. So, um, that's one of the signs of COVID-19. Usually, when there's a clinical suspicion, um, it's always Better okay. That's in the early days we used to use uh, the personal protective equipment. I mean the gown, the covering, the goggles, the boots, and all that at that time. And it's actually still being done in some centers. A person may have mild raising of the respiratory respiratory rate. So other areas when it comes to examination uh, will include that a person may have some hyperemia that's redness. Uh, along the throat region, that could also be a sign uh, when it comes to COVID-19. So let me talk to you about my personal experience with COVID-19. Alright, it happened early this year. 
after um, some time at work and all that, I found that I was having this generalized body pains, headache, and then I felt okay, trusting God to recover, rest. And of course, been busy on the walls and the clinics and all, but I found out that um, this pain was not going with um, an anesthetic, paracetamol, and all that. So I felt um, this could be malaria. Sometimes it was actually a long while at um, taking anti malaria. So I took anti malaria and I still didn't feel better. The body pains was still there. The headache was still there. So I thought to myself, looking at the fact that I didn't work in the environment where uh, a lot of children were, the was an emergency, children emergency, where children were not using uh, face masks and then. Um, of course, mothers were using, we medical um, professionals were using um, different ways to protect ourselves. But at a point, um, um, you need to know that somebody who be asymptomatic, will be carrying the virus, but may not have symptoms. So sometimes you could feel that so you can relate with somebody freely without uh, putting uh, precautions when it comes to face masks. Uh, washing your hands and all that. So in this my experience, I had to present myself to the staff clinic so that I could have my sample taken out. Then the doctor did that for me. He took uh, the, the the sample uh, from my throat. That is not a pleasant experience at all when that sample is being taken. For those that have actually have their sample taken like that, I'm sure you can say. See, even though it was a brief moment of uh, discomfort in the throat and all that, but um, the sample was taken and then um, the results came out um, to be positive for um, COVID-19. There was really nothing to be done other than fix drugs for the um, specific symptoms the day and then to observe some rest. When I had that experience, I thought to myself, oh, so if I will have this little, that little, no, very sensitive um, virus, little experience. How about people that were really down with this virus? Who had cough, who had chest pain, who had uh, sore throat, who had different kind of things. Or at the point I was feeling tired, but um, I just thought that, oh, this virus is not something to joke with. Okay, so I have to use my faith to deal with it. Um, trust God, um, using the word of God. See my healing. In fact, at the point, some people uh, that I didn't probably even communicate with were, were communicating with me, sending scriptures and all that. And I knew that oh, God was giving them opportunity to be supportive at that moment. Okay, so what? I came out stronger and better. But at the point, I still kept, kept having the fact. So, this is an area of controversy where people don't want to talk about their experience. People afraid that people will run away from them and things like that. So this one I'm talking about, I can't remember, it's even more than uh, eight, more, eight months now. There are controversies also about the vaccine. I have been vaccinated now, uh, two doses, but we'll be looking at these controversies. Stay tuned as we consider the myths about COVID-19 and COVID-19 vaccine, um, the variants, and everything that has to do with COVID-19. If you have questions, if you have contributions, if you have comments, kindly drop them. I will respond appropriately. Thank you for watching. I will be coming up with a part two, the part two of this particular topic, symptoms and signs of COVID-19. We'll be looking at the complications and then some other areas when it comes to this um, highly interesting topic. This is Thank you. Bye for now.